Hi everyone, I'm Reed and welcome back to Big Strong Book. Today we're going to be going over Roberto Bolaño's short story Gomez Palacio from his short story collection Last Evenings on Earth. So this is a shorter short story, about 10 pages long, um, and I'll kick things off here by reading the, uh, I'll read the first two paragraphs here because they're both kind of short. I went to Gomez Palacio during one of the worst phases of my life. I was 23 years old, and I knew that my days in Mexico were numbered. My friend Montero, who worked for the Arts Council, had found me a stint teaching a writing workshop in that town with its hideous name. First, to warm up, so to speak, I had to do a tour of the writing workshops the Art Council had established in various places throughout the region. A bit of a holiday in the north to start off, said Montero. Then you can get down to work in Gomez Palacio and forget all your problems. I don't know why I accepted. I knew that under no circumstances would I settle down in Gomez Palacio. I knew I wouldn't stick to running a writing workshop in some godforsaken town in northern Mexico. So that's how this story begins. Now, it tracks a quite interesting um, through line. Obviously, you get this uh, this man of letters, this writer, um, who is at an interesting point in his life. As he mentions in the opening, he is 23 years old, so one would assume he's kind of at that age where he might be getting further out uh, of the university spotlight and trying to figure out what he wants to do for himself. Now, when he gets to Gomez Palacio, he meets with uh, this woman who's the, the director and she kind of takes him around. And what's interesting is that the narrator doesn't know how to drive. And the director who she is touring him around this town, she kind of makes fun of him for that. And, you know, he goes to the writing workshop and he kind of sees these younger men and women who are somewhat aimless in life. I think I might try to flip through it here. Um, that they're, they don't know what they want out of life truly. And it's quite interesting. Um, so it says, uh, this, is when he, this is when he meets a, a workshop class. So one afternoon at the writing workshop in Gomez Palacio, a boy asked me why I wrote poetry and how long I thought I would go on doing it. The director wasn't present. There were five other people in the workshop, the five students, four boys and a girl. You could tell from the way they dressed that two of them were very poor. The girl was short and thin and her clothes were rather garish. The boy who asked the question should have been studying at a university, instead of which he was working in a factory, the biggest and probably the only soap factory in the state. Another boy was a waiter in an, in an Italian restaurant. The remaining two were in college and the girl was neither studying nor working. And, you know, he, he doesn't fully dwell on the, the people in the class because then it goes kind of, they have a little discussion about poetry and then he goes out with the director into, into the night. And in, over the course of her making fun of him, uh, not being able to drive, she says, okay, you get in the driver's seat and you drive, you kind of take us around town. And when he is driving, there's kind of a little bit of light road rage. And he kind of gives the finger to uh, um, to a guy that's just passing by. And then the guy stops behind them. And, he, you know, he doesn't get out of his car. He's not shouting or anything. He's just staring at them. And... So the narrator gets out of the car and he goes into the passenger seat and then the director gets into the front seat. And during his time in Gomez Palacio, he, uh, the director has been talking about kind of her strained marriage. And the man in the truck behind them, that's just the guy who's just staring at them, is her husband. 
Um, and again, it's he doesn't really follow them, I believe. Um, yeah, it just says, through the windshield I could see the man's silhouette, the nape of his neck, like he was looking forward at the line of the highway beginning to wind its way towards the hills. And so eventually that night, they go to this little overlook, you know, kind of in all those movies when you get a, a huge, I mean, and there are places like this in real life, but you get uh, this cliff that's kind of above the lay of the town. And especially at night when all you see are these grids of lights, you see all the streets kind of in a row, all the lights, and then all of the cars on the highways and roads intersecting throughout these cities. And they watch these cars and the cars themselves seem uh, seem aimless. And I'll, I'll read this paragraph because it's just so good. Um, so they pull over. So I wanted you to see this, she said proudly. This is why I love it here. She pulled over and stopped in a sort of rest area, although it was really no more than a patch of ground big enough for a truck to park on. Lights were sparkling in the distance, a town or a restaurant. We didn't get out. The director pointed in the direction of something, a stretch of highway that must have been about three miles from where we were, maybe less, maybe more. She even wiped the inside of the windshield with a cloth so I could see better. I looked. I saw the headlights of cars. From the way the beams of light were swiveling, there must have been a bend in the highway. And then I saw some green shapes in the desert. Did you see that? asked the director. Yes, lights, I replied. The director looked at me. Her bulging eyes gleamed, as do, no doubt, the eyes of the small mammals native to the inhospitable environment of Gomez Palacio in the state of Durango. Then I looked again in the direction she had indicated. At first I couldn't see anything, only darkness. The sparkling lights of that restaurant or town. Then some cars went past and the beams of their headlights carved the space in two. Their progress was exasperatingly slow but we were beyond exasperation. As if that isn't a, a full metaphor for what he's going through in his life, what the students that he's teaching these students that one is should be at the university, but they're working in a soap factory. The girl who's in the class to, dis, to discuss literature, the, you know, the people in the class who are just, you know, they're not working, they're not doing, they're not, they're aimless, but it's still, it still creates a lasting image. So I, you know, I mean, that that's an image that's so visceral in mind from the end of the story that I, I have to think that that's what Bolaño, maybe just reminiscing about his youth, if he was in a similar situation where he had to go off to teach a writing workshop and he didn't really want to, um, so yeah, a, a fascinating, fascinating metaphorical philosophy on youth or whatever. Um, so yeah, Gomez Palacio by Roberto Bolaño. It was an interesting short story. If you've read it, uh, let me know down below. And if you like this video, leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. Your support goes a long way. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the next Roberto Bolaño short story. Until then.